We're now going to be following Jesus' example and instructions and take the Lord's Supper together. Jesus instructed his disciples and all of his followers for generation after generation until he returns to remember him by drinking a cup of juice symbolizing his blood and a piece of bread as a symbol of his body. And at Grace Bible Church, we've decided to eat and drink in remembrance of him weekly. So that's what we're going to do now. I'll be preparing us for this time from Philippians chapter 2. If you don't have a Bible, we want to give you one. So there's some men on either of these aisles. Just raise your hand if you don't have a Bible. And if you don't own one at all, please keep this as your own. If you do and you just forgot, leave it in your seat or put it back up here on the stage when the, the service is over. We're going to read Philippians 2, verses 6 through 8. But as I read, before we do that, I, I want you to have in mind to notice how stunning these words are. That Jesus humbled himself being made in human form. Right, it's Christmas time after all. We, we know that Jesus became a man. He was born in Bethlehem. Songs tell about it. Nativity scenes depict it. Every year, the world appropriately stops to celebrate that Jesus took on flesh and was born. Most all the world knows the story in some shape or form. They know the word Christmas, but few are amazed by it. And only a few are saved by it. Because for us to be saved by Jesus' incarnation, his becoming man, and his, his death in the place of sinners, we must respond to this Jesus with faith and worship. We must remember this Jesus rightly. We must not get comfortable and complacent with the fact that he humbled himself. And we must never separate the incarnation at Christmas from his crucifixion and resurrection on Good Friday and Easter. So let's read together. Philippians chapter 2, starting in verse 6. Christ Jesus, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself taking the form of a bondservant and being made in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Let's make three simple but necessary observations of this text to guide our taking of the Lord's Supper today. First, Jesus had no intrinsic reason to be humble. And second, Jesus humbled himself by taking on the form of a man. And third, Jesus humbled himself through obedience unto death. So first, Jesus had no intrinsic reason to be humble. This Jesus who humbled himself is the same who is spoken of in Colossians as the eternal God himself who created and sustains all that is created. He is, the he is the image of the invisible God, it says, the firstborn of all creation. For by him, by Jesus, all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him all things were created for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. In him, the fullness of God dwelled bodily. When we are humble, we recognize our intrinsic not-godness. We recognize that there is, there's a lot in us to be humble about. Jesus had none of these things. Jesus always has been. He never ceased to be God. He is the radiance of the glory of God, the exact imprint of his nature, and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. He existed before creation, and all creation was created through him, 
for him and all creation will bow to him. Elsewhere, Jesus is referred to as our great God and Savior and as God over all. Jesus himself declared, I and the Father are one. And he said, before Abraham was, I am. If humility is to count others as more significant than yourself, Jesus is the one being for whom humility would be intrinsically completely out of place. Jesus was not humble because he lacked anything. That's the kind of humility that all of us beings who are not God must embrace. Yet Jesus, obedient to his father and in love for his people whom he would save for his glory, did not cling to his rights as God, but he emptied himself to become a man. Second, Jesus humbled himself by taking on the form of a man. So while God has no intrinsic reason in himself, God the Son had no intrinsic reason in himself to be humble. Like I said, man has every reason. We are creatures made dependent. We were made to glorify God. And among all the creatures that God made through Christ, we are special, right? We're the only ones that were made in the image of God. And yet we humans are unique also among all of the earth's created. We're, we're the only ones that sinned, who rejected God as God, who earned eternal condemnation for ourselves and introduced death into the world. And it's such a cosmic leap downward for God the Son to become man. Look at what it says how it, this passage describes this change of form. What word is used or what phrase is used? He emptied himself. This doesn't mean that he ceased to be God. For like we saw in Colossians, the fullness of God dwelt in Jesus bodily. Yet Jesus really was born. And he needed his diapers changed. He needed to learn. He had to sleep. He had to eat. He had to use this weak, limited, imperfect, fleshy body to see, to think, to walk, to talk. And he did it all without sin. His true nature was veiled when he emptied himself from those who saw him, uh, who otherwise, had he not done this, would have been obliterated by his glory if it weren't for the humble form that he took. Jesus felt pain, he felt hunger, he felt weakness. And more than this, he died. Jesus emptied himself by taking the form of a slave, being made in the likeness of man. And third, Jesus humbled himself through obedience unto death. Just think about that. God, the Son, Jesus humbled himself by obeying God the Father's will, obeying him all the way to death, even death on a cross. I know you guys know this. I know this is truth that you hear every week, that many of you recite, teach to your kids, teach to yourself. Don't stop being awed by this fact. Don't grow comfortable with this truth. This one, Jesus, who humbled himself to death, he did not sin. He was the one human, the only one who ever was or ever will be who did not deserve to die. He never sinned. He perfectly obeyed God, his father, from the heart in all things. But the very reason for Jesus' initial humble emptying of himself and taking on flesh was for this final glorious humiliation at the cross where he would conquer death for all who believe by dying the death we deserve. Jesus took the sin of all who believe in him and only the sins of those who believe in him across all time so that we could have our sins forgiven and have Jesus's perfect righteousness placed on us. Belief and full-hearted trust in Jesus and his death alone to make you right before God, 
That's our only hope to escape the judgment when he comes back again. It's this death on our behalf, our only hope, that Jesus tells us to remember every time we take the Lord's Supper. But we're only going to take this together in remembrance of him until he returns. Because Jesus didn't humble himself to death and stay dead. He returned to the Father's right hand as our intercessor and he waits. He very soon will return in glory with, the tr with his true nature as King of Kings revealed for all to see in order to tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. And the only way to escape this coming wrath is to have had Jesus already absorb it on your behalf on the cross. Jesus doesn't save religious people. He doesn't save churchgoers. He doesn't save good people because there aren't any good, at least not good enough. Perfection is the standard. Jesus is the only one that meets that standard. Jesus doesn't save the kids of those who believe or the kids of churchgoers. Jesus only saves those who despair of themselves and humble themselves in full dependent faith on Christ. The only way to be saved is through faith in Christ. So if you, by your own admission, look at your life and you're like, I've been trusting in my own goodness. Maybe you haven't even thought about how to get yourself right with God, that God will one day judge. If you, by your own admission, are not a Christian by this standard, then when the bread and juice come, let it pass. But please don't leave here today without talking to me. Uh, we're going to have people over here on your left at the end of the service who would love to pray with you. Go to the front at the, the uh, table, the welcome table out front, or find somebody who takes the Lord's Supper today and ask them, how can I be saved? Don't leave today without turning to the Lord in faith. And for Christians, regardless of if you're a regular attender at GBC or not, if you are one who has put your faith in Jesus, in this Jesus who humbled himself to death on your behalf, then please take the gluten-free cracker when it comes that represents his body and the cup of juice reminds us of his blood and, and hold it. We're going to take the bread and juice together in remembrance of him. Men, please serve us. And as you Hold your cup and hold your bread. Please consider this Jesus. Worship him. Consider your own life. If there's any sins or anything in your life out of step with the gospel that you need to confess to him, do so in pursuit of repentance and faith. And, and remember, hold the bread and juice, and we're going to take it together in a few minutes. When Jesus was with his disciples, the night before his humility and obedience climaxed in his death for us at the cross, he took bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Take the bread. And in the same way, the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Take the cup. <clears throat> 